Howdy from Arlington, Texas, y'all. Hope this video finds you well. Um, my first one that I did, I was, I was going to keep doing them anyway, but it seemed to be, uh, got a few comments on it, was pretty happy about that. The 1990 Fleer Update box set where I kind of opened it up and just went through them all seemed to be pretty popular amongst, uh, you know, the guys I know that follow that are my age. Uh, so I was probably going to continue anyway, but it was definitely motivating. So today I'm going to open just one because they're all the same. A 1990 score rookie and traded. So what I'm doing with these is, you know, the, the more iconic cards or the nicer cards, they're going to be for me. I'm going to keep those. Uh, but the other ones, I will probably lot them up. I've got uh, for 1990 on these like update and traded sets, I've got uh, I had the FLIR updates that I did last week. I got six of these. I got a uh, two upper deck extended and I got a tops traded. So what I'll do is going to have a lot of the same guys in those. So I will lot those cars up together uh, and put those on eBay under player lots, which I have a lot of success with. So kind of here's what you see in there. So you got your styrofoam on one side you got your what are they magic motion i think is what they were called the mini little trivia cards and then you got your box set right in the middle so yeah if you watched that FLIR one you're gonna see a lot of the same yeah we'll just rip the box who cares i'm not keeping them it'd be easier just rip that some bitch I love things like this. I miss the styrofoam that they used to put in blaster boxes back in the day uh, to keep the packs from moving around. Novel idea. Now they just let them bounce around. But I love these because they're card size, and I will use these as fillers in boxes. Um, you know, whether it be like a set box where you're going to sit it, you know, horizontally or vertically. Uh, it's one of the things I kind of use. Another th thing that I tend to use to be spacers in boxes are old... Uh, the core, the roll, the core, when you're done with a, a thing of packing tape, I like to use those as well. So anyway, here's your useless, useless whatever for the day, useless piece of knowledge. Although I guess if you think, hey, that's a great idea, I need to do that. Well, then I guess I've helped you out. So yeah, the MVPs. So NL 1973. It'll say Pete Rose, and it'll talk about those uh, those players on the back. So I'll probably include these as part of the include these in what could be a player lot of some sort, um, just because it still does reference the player. But anyway, so the score traded. If you know the score set, the ninety score set, like the early score, they would have multicolored borders. The traded set, however, all, I think it's 110 cards. They're all the orange border. Um, there is definitely one iconic card out of here that, you know, when this first came out was one of those, oh, got to have that card. Um, definitely not as popular as it once was, but if you collected, then you'll know it. So what we got? Dave Winfield. No idea if these are in a particular order. Dave Parker, Pete O'Brien. See, I remember Claudel Washington as a Brave. When I first got into baseball, he was playing with the Braves and was one of their outfielders. Francisco Cabrera for the Braves fans. I believe that would be an extended rookie card. He was in the uh, FLIR update as well. And there it is. This was a hot, hot, hot card back in 1990. Eric Lindros, third base, Toronto Blue Jays, which obviously did not happen, taking batting practice. I th believe part of it was part of the popularity was there was an issue with the companies. He couldn't come to terms with the companies, uh, well, some of the companies that were doing hockey cards or something like that. I can't remember all the details, uh, but also just, again, it being a crossover type card at that time you had the 89 upper deck nolan ryan throwing the football was popular just because he was throwing the football and you know you had the 91 then after this the next season you had the 91 upper deck you had the michael jordan sp1 where he was taking batting practice with the white Sox. so definitely a lot of novelty type 
things going on back then, trying to be creative, think out of the box then. Huh, almost more uh, more thinking out of the out outside the box thinking than these companies do now. Hall of Famer Gary Carter with the Giants just doesn't look right. Not a lot of stars, not the big rookies in here. Uh, a couple of the guys that you saw in the Fleer update that you won't see in here. There's no Frank Thomas because he was in the uh, first round draft pick subset in the regular 90 score set. Uh, no Kevin Moss because Kevin Moss, and again, not a valuable card, but if you were around then, you remember the Moss hype. Um, he was also in the basic score set. I don't remember. So Ken Obergfell, that's a guy I definitely remember also as a Brave when I first got into baseball. Let's see. What were the other keepers from that Fleer set? We had the uh, Nolan Ryan, no hitters and multiple decades, but there's nothing like that here. Lee Smith, I can't remember if he's a Hall of Famer or not. Operation Shutdown, Derek Bell. Uh, that's anytime I see Derek Bell, I think of him in Operation Shutdown. I think that was 2002 with the Pirates. He didn't think he should have to compete for a job. He should have just been given the job, and I'm pretty sure that was the end of his career. Randy Myers, one of the, what was it, the Nasty Boys or something like that? Is that what the, the bullpen for the, I think it was 90, the 90 season. The bullpen, Matt Noakes. We kind of went over him in the first. This would have been a big card. Well, not necessarily big card, but, you know, based on his rookie season in 87, where he had 32 home runs, you know, people were collecting Matt Noakes cards in 87 and 88, that's for sure. But, I mean, his rookie season was his best. Backs on these for Dan at Korean Cardboard. Uh, yes, I kind of showed it on the uh, one, but just look like the basic traditional early score back color photo stats, some, uh, some text Dan Petrie. I think I mentioned in the Fleer update that his son, Jeff Petrie is actually an NHL player. Now Jim Leyritz, who was a part of those, uh, that Yankees dynasty. Tony Pena, those of us that caught during our childhood, definitely uh, a lot of us tried that. The old Tony Pena catching stance it didn't work out real well for us. For me, Sandy Alomar Jr., big card. That's a keeper. Don Ossie, which I thought, I thought his name was so funny as a kid. I'm like, how do you say that? Is that ass? Yes, 11-year-old me. Ray Lankford had a solid, solid career. Uh, I think exclusively with the Cardinals. I don't think he played for anyone else. Bernard Gilkey. So, yeah, Gilkey and uh, Lankford, they're the Cardinals outfield of the future. Didn't quite pan out the way that they had hoped or that had been hyped. Joe Carter with the Padres. Carlos Bayerga, I think that would be an XRC, so that's a keeper for me as a former Indians fan who loved them during the uh, those nineties, those nineties golden golden days. Cecil Fielder after he came back from Japan in nineteen ninety, he went on nineteen ninety. What did he hit? I think it was forty nine home runs. Fred Lynn, obviously Dale Murphy is a keeper for me. Just a few left. So, yeah, in the comments, just let me know what you think. Uh, any stories about any of these guys or anything like that you want to say? Okay, so we, I was wrong. There is a Frank Thomas. But, yeah, I did not. I guess I forgot about that one. Still love, and I mentioned it on the Flare update, that this would be like the one year where he played where they had the old C. They were still using the red, white, and blue America colors and the script C on the hat. Yeah, I really didn't think he was in here, but hey, DJ Dozier, another uh, two sports star, uh, also played in the NFL. Neither one. I don't think he was like an all star and either. He definitely was not a baseball all star. I don't think he was. 
don't even remember how much he played in the NFL, but he was a running back, I believe, at Penn State and did get a little bit of time. I believe he was with the Falcons or the Jets. One of those is ringing. Some of those are ringing a bell, but again, could be completely off base. Who knows? Todd Hundley, so that would be a rookie. He was a solid catcher in the 1990s. Steve Avery, who, as I mentioned in the Fleer video, I thought he was going to be the stud of that young pitching group. Shows how good of a, how good I was at investing and prospecting. I think that guy, isn't that the guy, as I hear often, TTM legend Bryn Smith, I think he signs everything. All right, finishing it off here, Mark Langston and Terry Shumford. So at least of the ones I set aside, we'll look at them one more time. The, uh, the Steve Avery. I love that one. I always loved that as a kid just because it was uh, a little different because it was the red. I'm guessing that's a spring training jersey. Todd Hundley. Big Hurt. Frankie T. Dale Murphy. Cecil Fielder. Carlos Baerga. Sandy Alomar Jr. And the card that everyone wanted in 1990. The 1990 score. Rookie traded. Baseball. Eric Lindros. That's what I got. Uh, thanks for hanging in. If you stuck the whole way through, if you got any comments, feel free to leave them below. Um, planning to keep up with this series. Next one might be uh, probably be either 90 upper deck extended or 90 tops traded. I got both, uh, but hey, may as well do all the 90s together and uh, get going on it. That's what I got. Thanks for watching. Don't be a dickhole. Be kind to animals. Adopt, don't shop, and get your pet spayed or neutered. I will see you down the road.